further response from the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Health. Thanks, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the tra tragically hip is not the only great band to come out of Kingston. One of my favorite songs growing up was sung by the Kin Kingston Trio. You may remember it. Uh, where have all the flowers gone? Long time passing. Where have all the flowers gone? Long time ago. Where have all the flowers gone? Young girls that picked them, everyone. When will we ever learn? When will we ever learn? I rise today both humble and grateful to pay tribute to an important moment in time, June 6, 1944, D-Day, and the pivotal invasion of Normandy. It was a day of extreme bravery and tremendous loss. It was a day that would ultimately lead to the end of a terrible war and the destruction of a tyrannical empire that threatened the peace and stability of the entire globe. 14,000 men of the 3rd Canadian Infantry Division hit Juneau Beach as part of the largest seaborne invasion in history. Many were seeing their first combat action of the Second World War. They represented all regions of Canada, the East and the West. On the eve of D-Day, General Henry Duncan Graham Crerar, commander of the Canadian Army, conveyed this message to assault forces preparing for battle, and I quote, I have complete confidence in our ability to meet the tests which lie ahead. We are exceedingly well-trained and equipped. The quality of both senior and junior leadership is of the highest as Canadians, we inherit military characteristics which were feared by the enemy in the last great war, and they will be even more feared before this war terminates." End quote. General Crerar, who was born and raised in my beloved Hamilton, was right. No one who considers the events of the first hours of D-Day can fail to be impressed by the accomplishments of the Canadian Assault Battalions. Due to overcast skies that morning, most of the elaborate support fire failed, leaving infantry, combat engineers, and armoured troopers to overcome the enemy by direct fire. It took incredible courage just to keep going. Words cannot do justice to the individuals who rose to the challenge and led assaults on deadly enemy positions. Despite landing last and facing heavy resistance, Canadian forces reached further inland that day than any other nation participating in the D-Day assault. But let us pause for a moment and imagine, imagine those solemn minutes right before the landing craft gates opened on the beach sectors dubbed Mike and Nan. With the sounds of bombs exploding and bullets deflecting of armor, imagine that moment when a man must reach deep inside his soul, come to terms with fate, and make the decision to run into a hail of enemy fire, ready to lay down his life for the betterment of future generations. 340 Canadians died that day, June 6, 1944, with the Queen's own rifles from Toronto suffering the most casualties. In the days and months that followed, at Cane and onward to Falaise, 5,000 more Canadians men would make the ultimate sacrifice. The men who died were more than just uniforms with names. They had stories, loved and were loved and had plans for their lives after the war. We stand here today, a free nation, these privileges earned by the soldier and donated to all of us. They traded their tomorrows for our todays. It's impossible for us to comprehend the sacrifices made, not just by those who perished on foreign battlefields, 
but by those who survived and came home. Thank you. And as the sounds in the hourglass weave us, standing here today with fewer and fewer of our brave heroes we have to honour and thank, what can we do? What must we do? What I believe it is our duty to do is to never, never forget and to learn. The comfort we grant our veterans is the assurance that we recognize the sacrifices made and our vow to let no generation of Canadians ever forget. For it is only by accepting the advice of our veterans that there is no glory in war, only sacrifice and suffering, that we can avoid another generation from paying the same price. I'll leave you with another quote from General Crerar, who said, quote, war is so very truly hell. And this yard-by-yard yard fighting finds it at its worst. The gains are so small when it comes to distance, it just resolves itself into a case of counting corpses. If we have fewer than they, it's a victory. That's one hell of a measuring stick, isn't it? To those D-Day veterans joining us today, thank you. Back to flowers. May the flowers of remembrance and appreciation for all who served in the name of freedom continue to bloom in our hearts, for that would be truly the most important victory of all. Thank you.